Starting an MMO is a journey. Exciting, but daunting. Super rewarding when you make progress. Bloody demoralizing when you go the wrong way. It can last for years and take you to amazing places. Or people can get stuck, give up and go home after just a few days. How can we avoid this? I don't want to tell you exactly which road to take and where to stop that takes the fun out of it. But I can tell you what to pack. Hiya, this is Maya. I run the Ninja Pulse Guild, I've leveled nearly 30 characters in ESO, and I play them all the time. So this video isn't just a way for me to get clicks, it's stuff I actually do, and the advice I give to my friends. First, when you're starting out, take your time making your character. You can change it later, but it will cost you. Pick whatever race or class you want. There are some meta choices like Nord for tanking or High L for Magicka DPS, but they're not set in stone. Anything works, and your enjoyment is what matters, especially early on. If it's not your first character, start by allocating the champion points you already have. If you're brand new to ESO, work your way through the tutorial and pay attention. This game likes to get out of your way and let you play around. But that means there are very few tutorials later on. This is all you get. Very simply, there are three things new characters need to gather. XP, skill lines and skill points. If you've played other Elder Scrolls games, you might expect to improve by repetition, leveling your bow by shooting stuff, or becoming more athletic by sprinting everywhere. ESO doesn't work that way. It's a more traditional XP system. When you kill something, complete a quest, or perform certain actions, you gain XP. That advances your level and any abilities on your active bar and weapon and armor types you have equipped. This is important. Start working this system early. It will save you a lot of grind later on. Once you've picked a weapon in the tutorial, you can actually loot all the other weapon types as well. Killing anything with one of these equipped unlocks the skill line for that weapon type. That includes critters like bugs, frogs and snakes, which have no hit points and die to a single light attack. So it's not a bad idea to cycle through these weapons and whack a little critter with each of them, just to get them unlocked nice and early. Same with armor. After you finish the combat tutorial and head outside, there's loads of armor just lying around. Equipping three or more pieces of light, medium or heavy, unlocks that skill line permanently. And even if you don't unlock them, the skill line advances in the background so long as you're wearing at least one piece of that armor weight. But prioritize the gear you actually want to use. You'll want predominantly medium armor for a stamina character and light for a magicka character. The passives matter. So don't just spend skill points on shiny new abilities. Sometimes the passives are more useful. So take a moment to read through them in your class, weapon and armor skill lines. What about the other skill lines you'll need later, like Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild and Undaunted? The latter two advance in the background even before you join. But Fighter's Guild does not. So I suggest joining that early on by visiting the guild hall in the nearest city. Quick chat with the steward and you're done. You don't have to do anything else. Now you remember, every undead and daedra you kill on your travels will advance your rank. And by the time you actually need the skill line, you'll already be rank five or six without even trying. Much better than having to grind it out later. That takes care of skill lines. What about XP? ESO is extremely generous with XP, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. Quests, Exploration, Antiquities, PvP. You can hit a grind spot if you're in a big hurry. But if you're new and there's literally an entire world to explore, maybe go and do something fun. If you want a bit of both, I definitely recommend doing a random normal dungeon and or random battleground every day or most days. Once you've hit level 10. Great for XP, skill points, loot and learning how to play without too much pressure. Plus they're fun and the environments are super cool. The main quest is another great choice. Since it is literally designed as an introduction to the world and the setting and is extra generous with its rewards. It's very easy even at low levels and it's mostly instant so you can go at your own pace. Most of these quests are nice and quick. The plot is very simple, pretty much a retread of the Oblivion story 
but it's the characters that make it interesting. Obviously, it's base game content and not as slick as the latest stuff, but it works great both as an introduction and as a quick leveling strat. A couple of things to note first, whenever you complete a story quest with the Prophet and his companions, you have to exit the Harbridge and head towards a town. Then as you reach the outskirts, the Prophet will automatically appear and start the next quest. It's a bit weird, but it's a holdover from when the story beats were level dependent. The other point is that once the story takes you to Cold Harbor, things get a bit more challenging and the quest rewards don't come as thick and fast. This zone serves as a grand conclusion to the base game story and isn't geared towards new players the way the earlier quests are. If this is what you're after, I'd stop once you've got 10 skill points from the main story and have completed the Council of the Five Companions quest. This stuff is all solo, but most activities can be done with a buddy. Groups of two get 10% more XP from kills, plus you can go twice as fast and take down bigger enemies more easily. This is definitely worth doing if you can. I made a whole separate video on this. If you're both low level, it will be faster, but if they have a high level character, that can be incredibly helpful in porting you around, crafting you some gear and offering tips. Joining a guild early on is also smart. Many of the more active casual guilds will advertise in zone chat. And I heard about this amazing guild called Ninja Pulse full of awesome people and the greatest guild master ever. But seriously, one of the greatest things about ESO is its community, so don't miss out. Another thing you don't want to miss is riding speed. At level 10, you get a free mount. So get into the habit of visiting a stable every day, there's one in each town, and upgrading your riding speed. At level 10, you also get access to Cyrodiil, the open world PvP zone. Just press L by default to open up the menu, select the low level campaign, and press E to enter. I strongly suggest doing the tutorial early, even if you have zero interest in PvP. It takes three minutes, gets you three skill points, and advances you to rank three in both Alliance War skill lines. That unlocks Vigor, a great self-heal, and more importantly, the continuous attack passive for 30% faster mount speed. This is transformative. Just go get it and thank me later. Just don't skip the siege training or you won't hit rank three. Again, I touched on this in my Prepare for Necron video series, along with XP tips and an Arcanist starter guide. I definitely recommend watching the skill point episode for some tips, shortcuts, and a breakdown of how many skill points you need and how many you can get from sky shards, public dungeons, group dungeons, and so on. I think that covers it. Of course, the game is enormous and there's a lot more we could touch on, but I don't want this video to get too long. You can open up the in-game help menu by pressing F1 by default. The devs have been expanding this recently and you can get answers to most of your questions there. I hope this was helpful and saves you guys some time. Good luck with your new characters and I'll see you in Tamriel.